When I was a little boy, I was fascinated about mathematics. I tried to formulate mathematical problems all around me, and I was particularly fascinated about bettings and computing odds. So among my favorite toys were a deck of cards and a round-down bandit, for which I tried to compute probabilities of different outcomes. I studied a lot of mathematics at the university to learn more, and I kind of lost interest in bettings. Maybe I know too much about statistics now. But going up to Professor Gustafsson, I'm still fascinated how mathematical algorithms can be used in our everyday life to solve real problems, not only academic exercises. Whether you know it or not, I can confidently say that there are mathematical algorithms in all our devices and technology products today, implemented in software, and many of them stemming from academic research. So what we do at the university, me and my team, is to perform basic research leading to new mathematical algorithms. And what you see here is maybe my most famous equation and my most famous mathematical algorithm. Yeah, you have seen it before. It has been used by thousands of researchers. However, it is in my role as an entrepreneur and innovator, I can reach out to many more people, not only scientists. So among our spectrum of algorithms, I'm particularly proud of three cases where our research has been used and enjoyed, directly or indirectly, by a huge amount of people. Let me illustrate. Maybe you remember from driving school that each time you fill up your car, you should also check the tire pressure. Who does this? No one, right? That is why we today have a legislation saying that all new cars must be equipped with a tire pressure monitoring system warning the driver about low inflation pressure. We have invented a mathematical algorithm to compute the pressure in the tire without having sensors inside the tire, just using information already existing in the car. The system saves lives, emissions, and thousands of crowns for each car buyer. You can find the system in new Volvos and uh, 30 million other cars today. The second example, do you realize how many amplifiers a rock band has to carry around? We have invented mathematical algorithms to replace hardware, like amplifiers, with computer simulations. And one example is an algorithm used to modulate Adele's voice on the album 21 which has been enjoyed by literally billions of listeners. A third example, have you ever been frustrated in these big shopping malls, how hard it is to find the way to the shops, and even back to your car again in a parking house? Do you realize that GPS does not work inside buildings? Now, guess what? We have invented a mathematical algorithm to compute your position inside buildings just using information available in your smartphone. So now these are all examples where you may not be surprised to hear that mathematics is the foundation for innovation. But if I say that mathematics can be a fundamental factor to save endangered animals on the African savanna. For me, it all started three years ago when I was invited to take part in a feasibility study to document what kind of technology is used today to protect the animals and what can be used in the future, taking inspiration from how we in the Western world protect our critical infrastructure. In Tsavo National Park, there used to be 10,000 black rhinos 40 years ago, living in a small area at that time called the Rhino Valley. Today, less than 100 remain living in the sanctuary in Gulia, an area protected by armed rangers. Still, the threat from poachers, that is, illicit hunters, is immense. Our feasibility study let us explore how mathematical algorithms can be used to reduce the threat of extinction of the rhinos by providing the rangers with more efficient tools. 
Let me present Hassan. Hassan is one of the 60 rangers working in Angulia. Yeah, you are right. There is about one ranger for each rhino. Still, it's hard to protect them. How can that be? Hassan stays in a hut like this, together with a colleague, for one month. Then they circulate to another hut and another part of the park. Every day they make patrols where they look for rhinos. When they see a rhino, they report the health status and identity of it. They also report indirect sightings when they find uh, droppings, rest places or footprints. But they also look for human footprints and other signs of intrusion in the park. Because a poaching attack can happen anytime, anywhere in the park. The rangers have to be fully prepared. Today they have a paramilitary training and the main task has shifted from monitoring the rhino population to protecting it. Besides looking for poachers, they also look for dead rhinos. A dead rhino with the horns cut off, it's of course a poaching incident. And every time they find a dead rhino, it's a tragedy for the rangers, but it's also an important piece of statistics for decision makers. During our feasibility study, we found in the headquarter a primitive radio station for the walkie-talkies. There's one vehicle serving all 60 rangers. And to fight the poachers, the rangers have their personal Kalashnikov, and there is one tracking dog called Alf. What we proposed as a long-term plan is to develop a, an innovative, cost-efficient technology based on an app as the platform. The plan involves a lot of technology in the future, like thermal cameras and radar systems, to provide the rangers with electronic super eyes and super ears, to monitor the animals and to find the poachers. With all this technology, of course, mathematical algorithms will be needed. To interpret the complex information from the sensor and te technology into something useful, for the rangers. The long-term goal is to make Angulia into a gold standard for how technology can be used to protect the black rhino and then scale this solution to other societal challenges where, uh, for endangered animals. And we have uh, spent tens of visits to train the rangers and to learn from the rangers themselves how they would like a technology system to be designed. And our skilled use experience experts from Kenya have participated from the start, from design and implementation to training and support. And I think that uh, our approach differs from many other big initiatives in uh, saving endangered animals in several ways. First, we use a bottom-up approach, taking small technology steps, no giant leaps. Meaning that we start with an app and then add more technology off the hand. And two, we use a public-private partnership model with local ownership in focus. And the nice example is how a local telecom operator provided SIM cards with the free data traffic and then teamed up with a system manufacturer to deploy a 3D base station in Angulia, which might now be the only sanctuary in Kenya with 3D coverage. And three, we spend a lot of resources on training, training and training. So now Hassan and his colleagues can on their smartphones uh, report rhino sightings, both direct and indirect rhino sightings. They can see on a map how they walk and where they have patrolled before. And they can make instant alerts about security threats. So these telephones we have donated to them now, sophisticated piece of technology in itself, of course have to be very robust in this rough environment. And they are almost unbreakable. On the other side, the commanders can, on their tablets, see where the rangers are and what they do all the time. They get all the reports in real time. And every month, 
they get a summary of all reports and range of performance. And the last thing has added the gamification effect, because now the ranges are competing in which team makes the best reports and most efficient patrols, and the best team gets a prize from us. So, uh, my colleague, my co-worker, and now also my close friend, Johan Bergenes, has established the project on a high level, working closely with the senators, ambassadors, uh, ministers, and both the public and private uh, sector. He has published articles in Washington Post and similar uh, journals, and he has even presented the project for the Clinton family. And Johan's efforts and the hard work of the whole technical team have led to many requests for how to replicate this solution in other societal challenges. So now we have developed a more flexible app platform suitable for many kinds of field reports where security is in focus. For instance, we are working with the United Nations to assist officers in field in countries suffering from armed conflicts to report abuses to children and women. And another version of the app is developed for the police force for crime scene investigations. So in all cases, primitive tools like paper and pen, drawing maps, taking pictures, voice memos, whatever they have at hand, all can be done in one app, in a secure way. To wrap up, our work on mathematical algorithms can be rocket science, even literally speaking, but it can also lead to interesting encounters with new applications, even far out on the Africa savanna. That is what makes my job so fascinating I never know where the research will take me. I will stay on the smart savanna for a number of years, but I have no mathematical algorithm to predict what I will do after this, what the challenge will be, or where I will be traveling, but I bet it will be fascinating, and I'm very much looking forward to it.